So today we'll be discussing on the lysogenic cycle of bacteriophage. So from the previous class on the viruses, we came to know that bacteriophages, which is also termed as the bacterial viruses, such as the T2, T4, etc., they reproduce within the bacterial host cell using the lytic cycle. And finally, they destroy the cell. So they are also called as the virulent phage. The lysogenic cycle and the lytic cycle are the two reproductive processes that is seen in the bacteriophages. When the infection of the cell by bacteriophage results in the production of a new variant, then the infection is said to be productive. So this lytic cycle, it involves the entering of virus into the host cell and taking control of the host cell DNA to produce the viral DNA. And the viral proteins that provide the structural component of the bacteriophage. Further, when the cell has many virus particles assembled, they digest the host cell wall from within and release the new viruses to the exterior of the cell. While in lysogeny, the viral genome after adsorption and penetration does not take control of its host cell and destroy it but instead the genome remains within the host cell and is reproduced along with the bacterial chromosome passing from one generation to the next generation without rendering any harm. So the process of lysogeny was first explained by the French biologist Henri Wolf in the early part of 1950. So lysogeny cycle or lysogeny is one of the two alternative life cycle of virus that has infected a cell, attaches itself to the host DNA and it acts like an inert segment of the DNA and it replicates when the host cell divides. So bacteriophages that are able to establish lysogeny in the host bacterial cell are termed as the temperate phage and the latent form of the temperate bacteriophage which are present within the host cell without destroying it is called as the prophage. So this prophage it usually is integrated into the bacterial chromosome but sometimes it can also exist independently. So under certain conditions each of the bacterial cells in a state of lysogeny, they can produce and release new progeny bacteriophage spontaneously and lyse the cell. So such bacterial cell is said to be lysogen or lysogenic. So bacteriophages that undergo the lysogeny cycle includes the lambda phage and the phage mu. So now we'll come to lytic cycle versus the lysogeny cycle. So the lytic and the lysogeny cycle are the two different methods of viral replication. Under certain condition, they are interchangeable or the replication can involve both methods in separate phases. In border replication, the virus has to infect the cell. So the virus, it attached itself to the outer cell wall and it released the enzyme that weakens the cell wall. Further, depending on whether it is a DNA virus or an RNA virus, the virus injects its double-stranded DNA or its single-stranded RNA into the cell. In the case of lytic cycle, once the viral DNA enters the cell, it transcribes itself into the host cell's messenger RNAs and uses them to direct the ribosomes. Further, the host cell's DNA is destroyed 
and the virus takes over the cell's metabolic activities. Then the virus begins using the cell metabolism for its own multiplication and it starts producing progeny phages. So replication takes place at a faster rate and the cell is filled with 100 to 200 new viruses. Further, as the cell starts getting overcrowded, the virus releases an enzyme to break the cell wall. Further, the cell wall bursts and the new viruses are released. So this process is termed as the lysis. In short, the lytic cycle, it shut down the whole cell machinery and it destroys it. This lytic cycle, it occurs in the virulent phage and the symptoms of a viral infection, it occurs when the virus is in a lytic state. Whereas, in the lysogenic cycle, the viral DNA or RNA, it enters the cell and integrates into the host DNA as a new set of genes which is called as prophage. That is, the viral DNA becomes a part of the cell's genetic material. Here, no progeny phage particles like in the case of the lytic cycle are produced. Instead, each time the host cell DNA replicates during cell division, the non-virulent prophage also replicates too. So this process, it may change the cell's characteristic, but it does not destroy it. In lysogenic cycle, there are no viral symptoms. The symptoms occurs after the viral infection is over. But the viral DNA or the RNA, it remains in the cell and it may remain there permanently. However, under certain conditions, if this prophage undergoes any stress or mutation or is exposed to UV radiation, the viral lysogenic cycle can change into the viral lytic cycle. So now we'll come to control of lysogeny. To establish and control lysogeny, two events are necessary which includes the synthesis of all the lead proteins to be stopped to prevent the phage multiplication and the genome should be integrated into the bacterial chromosome. So first we'll see the prevention of lead protein synthesis. So to prevent the synthesis of lead proteins, the product of the C1 gene must be synthesized. So this C1 gene, it codes for the lambda repressor protein. If this repressor protein is synthesized, it represses the synthesis of all other lambda genome and coded protein. The C1 gene is located between the PL and PR, that is the promoter left and the promoter right. The transcription of C1 gene is promoted by PE, promoter, that is the promoter establishment. When this PE, that is the promoter establishment, is activated, it promotes the transcription of C1 gene which leads to the synthesis of lambda refresher protein that repress the synthesis of all other lambda genome and coded proteins and the lysogenic cycle is followed. Next we'll come to the integration of phage genome into bacterial chromosome. So the integration of phage genome into the host chromosome, it takes place by the insertion of the lambda genome into the bacterial genome at a specific site. With this, it effectively lengthens the bacterial genome by the length of the lambda genome. On injection of the phage DNA, the cohesive ends of the linear lambda genome comes to each other forming a circle. And it is thus circular genome that integrates into the bacterial genome. Then the site of the cohesion of the two ends of lambda genome is called the co-site. The gene, that is the C1 and the N gene, 
Int is the gene that encodes the enzyme integrase must be expressed to establish the lysogenic cycle. The integration process, it requires this enzyme integrase, which catalyzes the recombination of the phage and the bacterial attachment site. The int gene has the promoter and is activated by the C2 protein. When the cell grows, the lambda repression system stops the expression of the integrated lambda gene except for the gene C1 which calls for the lambda repressor protein. So at the time of replication of the bacterial genome, the integrated lambda genome is also replicated along with the bacterial genome and is transmitted from progeny to progeny. So now we'll come to induction of lysogeny. Induction is the dissociation of prophage from bacterial DNA and its conversion into virulent fast and initiation of the lytic cycle. This prophage then dissociate from the bacterial DNA and starts progeny production to result in the lysis of the bacterial cell. So this process of induction is triggered by the decreased in the concentration of the lambda repressure protein. The RecA gene of E. coli, it expresses a protein known as RecA protein. This plays an important role in genetic recombination. The RecA protein, it acts as a protease, that is the proteolytic enzyme, and it cleaves the lambda repressor protein chain between its two domains. So the separated domains fail to assemble to form the normal active repressor protein and as a result, the inactive form of lambda repressor protein can no longer bind to the promoter that function to inhibit the transcription of the lytic genes and the lytic genes become active again. However, the axis gene that is located just next to the int gene, it calls for the synthesis of an axisinase protein that binds to the integrase enzyme and it enables it to reserve the integration process and free the prophage. In this condition, the synthesis of another protein called the crow protein by the crow gene is initiated. This crow protein it switches the process of synthesis of viral components and the lytic cycle then proceeds normally. So now we'll see the significance of lysogeny. So lysogeny confers immunity to lysogen to the infection by the same type of phage. So under this, the temperate bacteriophage does not exist freely in the bacterial host cytoplasm. Instead, it remains integrated into the bacterial DNA and replicates along with it as long as its lytic cycle genes are not expressed. So this state of lysogeny is maintained by the phage repressor protein. The phage repressor protein which is encoded by the phage gene, not only controls the lytic cycle gene situated in the prophage, but also prevents the expression of any incoming genes of the same type of phage. So this confers lysogen resistant to infection by the same type of phage. So the second significance is the lysogeny is advantageous in phage in nutrient deficiency. So bacteria, they enter the dormancy in a phage infected culture that become nutrient deficient and they degrade their own messenger RNA, that is the mRNA and the protein. In this condition, the phage reproduction is confined only in actively metabolizing bacterial cells and is permanently interrupted in mRNA and protein degrading bacterial cells. So this condition can be avoided 
if the fudge turns to be dormant, that is lysogenic, simultaneously with the host, that is the nutrient deficiency favors lysogeny. So the third one is a high multiplicity of infection stimulates lysogeny. So temperate bacteriophages, they also have advantage in situation when each bacterial cell, it is subjected to infection by many viruses. That is, there is a high multiplicity of infection. In this condition, when every cell become infected, the final step is that the replication will destroy all the host cells. Thus, the fudge may be left out without a host and it directly exposed to the environmental hazards. So lysogeny therefore comes forward to avoid this condition. So some of the bacteria, they become lysogenized. They manage to survive and carry the fudge genome and increase their population by reproduction. So when a bacterial population increases, the fudge genome may dissociate from the bacterial DNA and may enter into the lytic cycle to reproduce its own progeny. Hence, a high multiplicity of infection does stimulate lysogeny. So next we'll come to lysogeny confers new properties on the bacterial cell. Lysogeny, they may induce a change in the phenotypic property of the host cell employing lysogenic conversion and thus confers a new property on it. For example, the corny bacterium diphtheriae, this is a bacteria that caused diphtheria, then the Clostridium botulinum which caused botulism, Vibro cholerae, which cause cholera, and streptococci, that is responsible for a disease that is known as scarlet fever, their virulence is in part due to the lysogenic bacteriophage that they harbor. So when non-toxin producing strain of Cornibacterium diphtheriae are lysogenized by the bacteriophage beta, they are converted to the toxin producing strain. So these strains, they produce the powerful exotoxin, which is called the diphtheria toxin. And these function to inhibit the eukaryotic protein synthesis and thus kills the infected cells of the host. So well, in the conclusion, it is said that Viral reproduction is most fully understood from the study of bacteriophages. So these two cycles, that is the lytic and the lysogeny cycle, are the two fundamental reproductive processes that occurs in the bacteriophage. Finally, lysogeny is of a major significance to temperate bacteriophages as most bacteria that are isolated from the natural habitat are lysogenic for one or more bacteriophages.